we got it before we the episode starts. Snacks, you got to turn that mic. You turn that fucking mic. You always told me the audio technica. Yeah, that's good. Right there. You're good there. Right here. Yeah, well. It was just in front of me. Yeah, no, but you, you turn it like this throughout the episode. And then at one point, you were completely backwards. Whatever. Last week. They're investigating your brother. What? Well, your brother's investigating the... I said that weird. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, well, yeah. Scared me for a second. <laughs> a little bit. Your brother's investigating the... Company? The company's delivery service. He said he called and the number isn't real. So that's not a good sign. Nope. Did you, you Have you used it? No, I just saw it this morning. You haven't used it and you just told and him it was legit. Nice. Is it legit? Yes, yeah, legit. You get like <laughs> or, cool Oreos legit. and chips. I saw it this morning and just said, like, oh, this looks cool. It looks legit. Where did, just, wait, where did you find it? What is it? Someone sent it to me. It's um, So it's a, it's a delivery service for marijuana in New Jersey. But what they do is they don't deliver... You, you're buying a, a snack pack, like a munchies pack. So it's like Why do they hide it? Is it illegal? Because, well, so the bill passport, so you're allowed to smoke marijuana. You're allowed to have and possess up to a certain amount, but you still can't sell it without a license. You know, so. So they're selling it without a license. But they're not. They're giving it to you. They're selling you Oreos and Pringles. They're giving you, they're sending you a snack pack and they're also gifting you. And that's with allowed? That. Yes. You're allowed to gift? Yeah. You can gift anything you want. Fair. So what they're going to do is, you know, you buy the Pringles pack and you get Pringles and Oreos and, and fruit snacks. And then you also get a half ounce of you know, Righteous Bud. I'm shocked. <laughs> you, I'm shocked you haven't tried it yet. Well, I just saw it this morning. I came here to New York. So you got it's a delivery service. They drive it right to you, apparently. Mm. Also, could be a complete scam. I don't want my brother involved in that shit. Why would you tell him? I just spreading the good word. This is clearly not a good word. Spreading, spread, spreading the good word of the Bud, my man. You know what today is? You know what national holidays today is? Is it a real one? There's or is four it? of them. They're, they're all fake. Right. Actually, it's Dr. Seuss's birthday, well, so that's real. Whose birthday? Be Dr. careful. Seuss. Dr. Seuss is canceled. Oh, that's right. Yeah. He seems like a guy that would eventually get canceled. He got the canceled. president canceled. I saw it today. He that would canceled. be a good herd of goats, actually. Uh, list of people who are soon to be canceled. Oh, dude. Who shouldn't be canceled, but will be canceled. Yes. Like Dr. Seuss would be a G1, probably. You know what? Or Let's G0. circle back to that, because at the end of this, I do want to go over some herd of goats topics for next week. So. so it's Dr. Seuss's birthday, National Egg McMuffin Day, National Old Stuff Day. National Read Across America Day. Which Wasn't National Read Across America Day the one where, like, in remember in Volano, mm-hmm. everyone would just post up in the hallway, and you'd have, like, a thousand kids just, read, like, yeah. sitting in the hallway Never a reading. big reader. Do you know how to read? When was the last book you read? Oof. That should tell you right there. <laughs> that should tell you right there. They're, you know, like, paper book? Any book. I'm about to pre-order Action Bronze. Dude, no book uh, probably from, like, forgot. front to back, full book, like, of Mice and Men. And what was that, like, eighth grade? So, yeah, it's been a while. It's just absurd. It's been a while. Front to back? No, I can't, you know. It's just... Unless it's like a... like With pictures? I'm a visual guy. I think we spoke about this before. I'm a visual learner. I'm a visual guy. I like to see things. I like to watch movies and documentaries. Is my... You know, if I want to learn... You can see words in a book. Even podcasts, like, I'll listen, but it's not the same as, like, a documentary. I I need to be, like... Even if it's not really showing me what it is, but I can look at something while they talk about it. Otherwise, I wander. I'm all over the place, you know? I think there's a, I think there's something, something they call that, they diagnose you with. It's like it's something to do with your attention span. You know, just pre-ordered Action Bronson's new book. Hell yeah, brother! You're gonna read it. It's called Fuck It. I'll start tomorrow. Sometimes I'll buy books just for the bookshelf. Ninety percent of the books in your. Where is the bookshelf in your house, by the way? Just my TV in the living room. Okay. I was gonna say I think I've seen it there. Yeah. Yeah. Seen all. I've seen all your books. Well, last night on Animal's House we were talking about Principia. You know what Principia is, of course. So it's um. Isaac Newton's book about how he, you know, you just went. think of shit on Animals House, like <laughs> topics that like, you didn't know what they were, but then you learn about them right before you go on air so that you could be like, you don't know what this is. I do that kind of, but last night was a big botch because we were trying to talk about space and it's really hard to retain any like space stuff because all like crazy numbers and like, well, it's, lat- like it's like cryptocurrency like where it's like no one actually knows what it is. But it was a disaster. I was like asking him, like, I was like, what's uh, the Sombrero Galaxy? And they're like, uh, and he's like, it's in Mexico. Like, we had no idea. What we were doing, it was a really bad show, actually. So I don't stay know. tuned I for that. Disagree. Stay tuned for that. <laughs> I'm about to drop I it. I saw it. What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome, bike, like to the channel. Welcome, bike, to the Fade the Public podcast. My name is Nicholas. That is Animal. That is Snacks. What up? Skirt. Beep. I also I just want to make a quick announcement. I'm not going to wear white anymore because I realize. It blends in a lot. I can't even see myself right now. I'm looking at you. Can you see me? It's like if I took my shirt off, it would be the same thing. 
We should all we, just do shirts off. We'd have a episode. we'd have a serious problem. They wouldn't be able to see any of us. Yeah, yeah. translucent uh, snacks over here. Shirts off, hats on. All we'll right, so we got a fun show today. Do we? You like that? Cut you off now. Debatable. We got a fun show today. We're gonna talk about actually. Well, we're gonna get into an announcement. Uh, Let's get it out of the way now. I want to get out of the way. We forgot last week. Okay, so the Monkey Knife Fight giveaway that we had been promoting for pretty much the month leading up to the Super Bowl. You know, we have a giveaway in which the grand prize is one of you unfortunate people gets to come out here for uh, a trip to New York City. You'll get to stay at the headquarters during the summer when things open up, clear up. You'll get to hang out with us and meet meet the cast and the crew and the production team, which is they'll probably just like meet me for about an afternoon, and then I'll be like, I got to go somewhere. You can hang out at the house. Sit on the couch. Yeah. You'll, uh, you're going to come out here for an expenses paid trip to New York. Grand prize. We also have a couple other spots opening up. Big Dogs Dynasty League. You're going to get into a redraft league with us. Uh, this is just an announcement to tell you that that's obviously been closed. It was shut off at the Super Bowl. But we are going to announce the winners to that contest on next week's Fade the Public. Oh, teaser. Okay. So if We you were entered, supposed sure to do it in. this week, but we didn't announce last week that we were going to announce it. So yeah. now we are announcing that. So the announcement of the announcement got delayed. Therefore, the announcement well, like got smart delayed. people, you regroup and you uh, you adapt or or you die. We almost so. just said, you know, fuck it. That's it. We missed the announcement. and We can't do it, and that's it. But no, we we didn't we didn't do no, that. do that to y'all. We would we would do that. I would. <laughs> well, one hundred. <laughs> I'm, I'm still thinking about doing it. All right. So aside from that, now you know that today's big uh, focus of the episode is we're going to talk about lovable landing spots. These are for a lot of the, the rookie players. That will be entering the NFL in the draft this uh, coming. Is it next month? What's the, this it's is the March. end of April? Yeah. So next month. Wow, we're almost there. So we're going to talk about some of our favorite landing spots. Where we want to see some of these guys. Uh, where we want to see some of these guys go, and uh, why we would want to see them go there. And then I got a couple of things I want to discuss about. Do they have to be realistic? No. Okay. Absolutely not. But I'm only I mean, doing realistic ones. So like a Jamar Chase, I don't want to see him go like Philly. Well, but not not even for like a giant because I think Jalen Hurts sucks. So you don't want Jamar Chase's talent to be wasted with You're worried about right. Jamar Chase's well being. I would love <laughs> yeah. to I would love for him to go to Kansas City per se. Okay, like Well, I wouldn't like that. Well, he but said we, not realistic. Well, we'll talk about no, it. No, they have to be realistic based on the draft capital. We also but, have um, so otherwise you could just name every player Kansas City. A Correct. surprise coming up. Uh, we do. We don't know when, except we do know when, but someone doesn't know when. So we'll have the reaction to that, and then we're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're gonna talk about um, some. I herd think of goats, I know what it is. Some herd of goats topics that we're gonna go over for next week because we want to do herd of goats next week. It's off season. We're gonna bring it back. So so bad. You know. Herd of goats. Fuck a bike. Fuck a bike. Anything else? That's it. You can do. Scott, hit the intro. <laughs> Kyle Van Noy released already. Irrelevant. Back from the intro. We here. All right. Lovable Back landing spots. I want to start. I want to start first. So I'm going to give you. Um, I feel like so Nick's going to have some like actual factual stuff that will probably help you. I got the real analysis here. This is the stuff that, you know, you won't think of. I can't wait for this. <laughs> no, no. Here we go. You ready? It's a ridiculous intro. And this is crazy, too, because of, you know, me as a Broncos fan. But Jalen Waddle to the Chargers. And here's why. Here's why. Broncos have Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, two really good slot receivers. Raiders have Ruggs and Renfro, two two pretty good slot receivers. Ruggs sucks, but yeah. But you know, Renfro's top ten. We'll in the see. Game. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Give him time. Chiefs, Tyreek Hill, McCall Hardman, pretty good slot receivers. Two top ten in the NFL slot receivers. Two right pretty there. good slot receivers. And then you go to the Chargers. Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. Like Keenan Allen's great, but he's, you know. Can I just can, can I just say like real quick, you just went to each team, named two receivers, one of which neither of them were good at slot receiving. Whoa. Like Whoa. Ren Renfro was probably the only secondary piece that's even a semi good slot receiver. Ruggs didn't do shit. KJ Hamler didn't do shit. Nicole Hardman hasn't done shit. Well, focus on the first guy that I named. Sure. You know, Keenan Allen, Tyreek Hill. Those are the, the good bigger ball players. Names. Here's where I'm going with this. Chargers need one of those guys. They need a slot guy to fit the division. The AFC West is built on slot and quarterback play now. A lot of speed in that division. They had a couple That's guys it. break out down the stretch speed. last year. I can't remember their names. Who, like Jalen Guyton and those guys? It was it was another dude. Those that, guys, like, they ran a ton of routes, didn't get the balls. So you need guys that are going to get the ball and make plays. Jalen Waddle will be that guy for the Chargers. And I don't want this to happen because I'm a Broncos fan. I don't want to see Jalen Waddle run down get, the field. You, with Justin Herbert. Right away, That'd yeah. be fun. 
but it fits the chemistry of the division. It's a division play. It's a division pick for me. Big speed division. A lot of speed. You want to compete in the AFC West now? So many West good now? slot wide receivers. You know, a cannon arm QB. Herbert's got a big cannon. Car. Mahomes has a big cannon. Car's got a fucking cannon. Drew Locke has a cannon. It's not accurate, but that's what I'm saying. The slot guys are important, especially in this. And Mike Williams isn't the answer. Keenan Allen's getting ready to retire. They just Jaylen extended Waddle. him like five years. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> you, so you think Keenan's out? In who's at, who's Keenan Allen, two, two years he's gone. Two, he's not Adam, who's out of the league first, DeAndre Swift or Keenan Allen? Ooh. DeAndre Swift, for sure. Out of the league first? Yeah. Feel, out of the league. That. Not like productive, just <laughs> out. Out of, the, out of the, like, the At home, like tired. Pumping gas. Don't even come into training camp this year. Jersey. We're done with you. Love yeah. that. Okay. I, so you, are you starting with Waddle? Like, do, do That was my start, yeah. I went All with, right, well, here's what I want. As a Falcons fan at the fourth overall pick, I want Justin Fields. I would love to invest in a quarterback. Because, listen, the Matt Ryan thing's done after probably another year. Is he? I think so. I mean, he's 36, in Atlanta. he's still playing pretty. In Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. In Atlanta. I, I, in I Atlanta. think we're going to start okay, like going somewhere where Julio's we, so, where we rebuild. Gone. The identity yeah. of our team, I think, is going to be different. Yeah. It's going to be interesting because when we have um, Arthur Smith coming in, I'm curious because we've had Dirk Cutter last, you know, whatever X number of years. Good and, coach. And our passing, shut up, our passing rate is like 74%. Like, we don't run the ball. We have no success running the ball. This guy's coming in, obviously coming from Tennessee, where all mm-hmm. they do is run the ball and, and run play action. So I'm wondering, you know, if we dip down from 70% to 60%. That play action, though, Matt Ryan, I don't know the actual number, but he's one of the best play action quarterbacks in the NFL. I remember I reading it. the actual stat, like, it was like 120 of 160 passes were completed. Play action like stats are sort of like, like are, are sort of like space things. You just can't remember them, right? Yeah, I'm not going to give you the actual numbers. I'm just going to tell you they were good. Love that. You yeah. Know? So that's the thing. Like I think we dip down a little bit. But we're going to start having to look towards uh, some kind of running back, which I'll get into a little bit later. Oh, yo, I want to get into that later that too. I was talking about wait for, for Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, me yeah. too, man. I wonder if it's the same. So I want Justin Could Fields be. at four. I want someone who you know, may, depending on whatever you think about Justin Fields. Question. I want him to sit for a year behind Matt Ryan, take over next year. Are you at all like worried about what you would have to give up to move up to possibly get him? Because you're probably not going to get him. I think we do get oh, him. Oh, no, they, they get, yeah. You think so? Well, I, I was going to ask. I think is, it goes Lawrence. I think it goes. Yeah, like, okay. Yeah. I, I, I want him, not Zach Wilson. I see. I feel like some, like the Jets are not going to take Wilson. They're going to trade that pick and then someone's going to snake. I don't but think. I think whoever, uh, dra- whoever moves up to two is going to take Wilson. Not Fields. And then Miami's not going to take him. Well, that's what you think. I'm saying everyone's saying Wilson, 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 but who knows? I don't know. We'll I'm see. just saying, the, in lovable landing spots, I would like the Falcons to land Justin Fields at four. He's got a nice setup there. Arthur Smith, he'd be, you know, he's, he's very mobile, so I think it'd be great for the play action scheme. We'll have Calvin Ridley in his prime for him. You know, I don't know what Julio's going to do. He'll but be gone by then, probably. probably I'm a fan if of, Matt Ryan's gone, then Julio's probably going to be gone. But, yeah. like, you know, I just, I just think it's a good – this is one of the very few opportunities where, like, a bridge quarterback could actually come into play. Every, um, every team – talks about how they want to do it and then four games into the season they're, when they're 0-4 putting up 16 Atlanta, points Atlanta a game. Atlanta is in a perfect situation. Exactly. New head coach, he's not tied to Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's 36 years old. They have the number four pick. Now's the time to do it. Yeah, I'm don't get me wrong. I won't be surprised if Matt Ryan is you know still there for like three years or something until his last fucking legs. But I think this if there's ever a perfect time to do this for Atlanta, it's right now. Yeah. Right here. I, I would, right now. Right, right here. here. Great song. Right, right now. now. Who sings right it? Right here. I think I know this, but I, I don't know. I just said Usher, though. Is it a... No, I'm not even going to say it because I think it's going to be embarrassing. If I say it. I said Usher. I can't get more worse than that. Probably. No, I actually forget, too. Okay. I'm, I need to look it up. No, I was getting confused with the Van Halen song. LMFAO. Is it? Fuck, I should have said it. It's Fat Boy Slim. I knew it. Oh, God, wow. It. I was going to say that, and then I was like, and then I figured everyone was wow. going to be like, All world fucking... name. All yeah. Fat Boy Slim. Yeah. Oh, should yeah. should call you that. Well, that's an oxymoron. Because you're fat and not slim. No, no, no the, the Fat name. Boy Slim is an oxymoron. <laughs> Okay. Like, well, if you if you get to pick for your Falcons and you took Waddle to the Chargers, not for my team, but yeah, go no, ahead, pick, no, no, no. Pick but pick you're taking the Giants. I don't, don't want to say, say. Hold on, everybody. I'm Snacks, and uh, I'm a Giants fan. I'm gonna. Th- I like Kyle Pitts to go to the New York Giants. Well, I would have taken Waddle, but I don't want to say Waddle to the Giants because you already used Waddle up. Yeah. So I will gladly take Kyle Pitts, yeah. and hopefully Evan Ingram gets the fuck out. Wait, because did the you, man can't did you catch. pick him to go to the, to the Giants? Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Wait, so what's going on with Ingram? Didn't they take his fifth-year option, though? They did, yeah, but it's, I mean, they ran two tight end half the half the game, every game last year. Every play was two tight end. One of them was terrible, and the other is Evan Ingram, who is even worse. And they keep talking about playmakers, and now they're saying that Kyle Pitts is more of a receiver than a tight end, so why wouldn't you want that big-bodied, massive human being who could actually catch the ball, didn't drop a pass in college? Daniel Jones, he needs a weapon, does he not? Who's he, who's he throwing the ball to? Fifth-round Darius Slayton, Golden Tate's gone, Sterling Shepard's eh. 
Who else would they get, uh, would they take there? Devontae Smith? No. I think Kyle Pitts is a perfect tool for, for Daniel Jones, and that's where I want, and that's who he would be great with. It's a lovable landing spot. For me, yeah. Okay. I want I want Buffalo. If Buffalo doesn't – first of all, I want them to get Chris Carson. I want Chris Carson to be in Buffalo as their running back. I think I think it's it's pretty that's obvious. A good landing Singletary spot. and Zach Moss just, just – They need a real like, bell cow it. style. So I was going to say they have the 30th pick. I think that's probably around the time – Within take 10 or so back. picks that Najee Harris comes off the board. Mm. Najee think, Harris or Chris Carson, I think, is a perfect perfect running back to sit behind Josh Allen. Run the ball in the trenches, catch the fucking ball. Pretty much, you know, you have uh, – I think John Brown's going to be out of there. So, it's just Stephon Diggs in the passing game. They do need that second. Gabriel there. Davis is going to be a stud this year. I like Gabriel Davis a lot. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of good pieces. But it's I think, fun. like, a running back can play a really big role in the passing game. So, I, I think, think it takes a little off of Josh Allen, too. Let Najee sure. Harris or someone go beat up the defense a little bit. And then when Josh has his big runs, it's going to make it a little harder for yeah. him to tackle him. So, we'll see. This would be the third straight year that they do invest in a running back if they grab Najee early. They have their – you know, they have all their picks, first, second, third round. But they're 30th, 61st overall. So, if they don't go Najee, like, I don't know if I really want them to take a random running. Do they need run. like a, I'm not a Bills fan obviously. Do they need like any like big pieces on like defense I'm sure or something? They do. That, like, well, their defense should. was not good last like, year. There's they no way they probably coach, actually so take probably... one. Yeah, I think they need some help somewhere. So do you remember? You remember what two years ago all the all the smoke was that Josh Jacobs to the Raiders with that that second first round pick? Yeah. Well, to me, I feel like this year it's the same thing with Najee, but to Miami, it I think twenty. They have the eighteen. They have the it's three 18? and the eighteen. I, I, I would every mock I've seen they, they, Najee, but that's so high. I would hate that. That's I would really hate that. That's too high. Yeah, I think that's why I think like 30th overall for Najee. It's a good landing spot like for running back for in the sense, and then when you put him in Buffalo. Do you want to stay on Najee? Because I have Najee as um, – I mean, everyone's going to have Najee going everywhere. He's well, going I have to Pittsburgh. He's going to Atlanta. He's Miami, going to Pittsburgh. I think, Pittsburgh. is one of the actual realistic places because they have the picks and they need it, whereas – a lot of these other teams, I think you're going to see, like, running back's just that position now where it's not worth drafting that high. So, like, no. if you have a lot of picks, yeah, you want to throw one at it, go ahead. Here's why I like him to the Dolphins, though. I mean, you already have uh, Miles Gaskin there who can handle the receiving work, even though Najee Harris can catch the ball and he's a good receiver out of the backfield. Najee's going to be a three-down guy. Yeah, exactly. But you still have, with all the picks that the Dolphins have, it's a no-brainer. The what do they have, bowl? two firsts, two seconds? The exact amount. I'm I don't not know. sure it's about like the seconds. Or... I know they have the the two firsts. Um. Huh? You're, you guys are lucky <laughs> I'm not in a bad mood today. What? It's incredible that you actually think I buy into what you're saying. Too. What? Like, why even waste your breath? We're it's, a, it's we're it's sorting a thing. out this it's punishment thing. thing from bagels and locks from from the other day. That's what it is. That is all it is. I don't know why you think we're like trying to. Najee Harris, though. I mean, what about the Jets? Some people would call him a fat. Some people would what call him a fat running back. While he's, he's not. He's, he's lean, not because he's, he's jacked. I look at him as like you know the mini freak athlete Derrick Henry. A lot of people yeah. were calling AJ Dillon that, and I no. think they jumped the gun a little bit on that. I think Najee Harris is the guy they really should have been talking about when they go. And I mean, it's Najee's more like uh, he looks more like Demarco Murray to me. Twenty two. Someone who's like mm, two wow, twenty two twenty six or something. Twenty two. Like 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 Alabama. Yeah. I mean, it's all there, right? It all comes back to him, huh? But I, I'm with you on the Miami thing because of the second first round pick. Um, if they just had the 18th pick, then no, I, there's no way. Buffalo's a good landing spot. What about um? What about the Titans, Najee? You get out dude, of Derrick dude, Henry's contract. Da, how dare you? Don't wow. even. Don't you dare. <sighs> Derrick Henry's spot is untouchable right dude, now. They he have, literally they have is the the, uh, the, next, the heartbeat of that team. The next king of the throne, Darrington Evans. Oh, that's true. Darrington, yeah, he was a bust. Two hundred one pounds. Yeah, like Derrick I don't know Henry, why people got excited. Honestly, about Derrick him. Henry ridiculous. maybe has a year or two left in the league. Yeah, before they're like, you can't play because you're too good. Yeah, you're done. We're done with you. Yeah, him this, and DeAndre. League, him and DeAndre Swift are going straight to the Hall of Fame together. It's Ooh. gonna be insane. You can take the same bus to Canton. Yeah. Hold hands on it. Maybe eat some of those munchy snacks on the way. They order piss. it for the ride. What are we talking about right now? Just talking good things, football things. We're talking about Derrick Henry going to the Hall of Fame. I thought you'd be all in the on Titans that. Titans drafting Najee Harris and him him beating out Derrick Henry in training camp. Stop. What makes players better is competition. So you might as well bring in a competition for your best player. Yeah, but what you're Make gonna, them even better. What you would do at that point is you're going to be now wasting two talented players. You're going to have Derrick Henry and, and Najee Harris fighting for snaps. On the same team, it's it's stupid. We're, we're just kidding. Put Derrick Henry a wide out. No, I'm just making shit up. <laughs> have, you, have you seen that guy catch? You have you seen that guy catch balls? Derrick Henry, so good. He has his he's got he hands has, like he has his moments. Throw him out wide at the X, bro. Did you see that he Let did have a nice ass screen that one play where he caught the ball and he ran. had a lot of screens. He, where caught, he, he caught the ball and the ball ran after. Either. Yeah, that's cute. You know, I'm speaking of catching the ball out of the backfield. Tampa, no, the Tampa Bay Bucks. 
Tampa Bay Bucks need a receiving running back. I think this is probably going to end up being a very chalky, lovable landing spot for people out there. But Kenny Gainwell to the Bucks makes too much wow. fucking sense. Kenny Gainwell out of Memphis. This kid, he didn't play in 2020, but the previous year, he went over 2,000 yards from scrimmage. He was the guy who kept Antonio Gibson on the bench, but more so, he's a phenomenal receiving back. Caught 51 passes for 610 yards in that last year, 2019. I personally don't think he's that great of a running back. We see a Dude, lot of... I was just going to say, I feel like every listen, Memphis running back is like that. Well, he, he's he's more... What uh, happened Tony, Pol- Tony Pollard and Antonio Gibson are good running backs. Daryl Henderson benefited from having a massive... Like an O-line. When you're playing in the fucking American Conference, their O-line was one of the best in the country. Yeah. They're opening up holes for a guy who runs a 4-4. Obviously, he's going to have 2,000 yards from scrimmage. Yeah. I don't think Daryl Henderson... Or I don't think uh, Kenny Gamble is that great of a runner. He's really good in the passing game, though. He's a great receiver. So you pair him with like a Ronald Jones where you don't have to put the pressure on. Brady wants this to. This sounds like Antonio Gibson all over to me, though. So I'm saying, like, remember Antonio Gibson? Well, no, Kenny Gamble's like 200 pounds. Yeah, Gibson's like a workhorse. Size wise, but I'm talking about like the actual, like, you know, he didn't get a lot of carries, all pass catching and everything. And then, like, we don't expect well, no, to be no, no, a great Gainwell, runner. Gain, Gainwell carried the ball like 250 times for 1,500 yards this last year. He was okay. he was the workhorse. He, was he, didn't, get, he didn't get three touches. Like, what I'm, like what I'm saying well, what I'm what saying, I'm, Antonio Gibson had you know, all the receiving work, and then all of a sudden he was a great runner. But Gibson was built like a runner. So you could see it coming from a mile away just given his athletics and shit mm-hmm. like that and when you watch the film you're like dude he breaks every fucking tackle yeah. but Gainwell he, he had the workhorse volume and he produced like it I just like he's not that elusive he's not a great runner between the tackles and at 195 pounds no NFL team is going to use him that way put him in the bucks let him run wheel routes let Brady dump the ball off to him because you know those guys weren't fucking catching anything for him this Look year what he did with James White and Deion Lewis back exactly so let, so, so let like a more explosive James White play that role for Gainwell and maybe he does get better at running the ball and becomes like an Austin Eckler type guy where yeah. he can carry you know 12 times a game or something like that but I think Gainwell to the Bucks in probably the end of the third round fucking beautiful that's nice I have um I have a quarterback uh Trey Lance who I'm enamored by and I think I think Carolina is perfect fit. I knew this was going to be a motherfucking Eddie Lacy video. Let's go. Oh, yes. Let's go. I didn't. I didn't watch it yet, but I'm going to be really pissed right now. No, you should watch it right now. Watch it right now. If he's saying, if he's talking shit, I'm going to be upset. (laughs) Dude, he sent it to us. Like we didn't. Yes. Nobody did this. We are just the messengers. Yo, what's up, Nick? Uh, Eddie Lacy. Uh, Message from your friend Steven. Uh, We just want you to know that true clown, bro. Told me he was gonna fucking do this too. Steve told me. Well, I don't think he told. He just told him that he's gonna do it one day, probably. Uh, See, no, you know what happened was somebody (laughs) fucking DM me a picture that they got an email getting notified by Cameo that that Eddie Lacy went on Cameo, Mm -hmm. and I showed Steve that. And Steve loves Steve loves when I fight with people on Twitter and they use the clown emoji at me because he knows it gets me riled up. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing really phases me on Twitter except for when people do that the for some reason. Emoji. Yeah, so he was like, I can't wait to get Eddie Lacy to call you a fucking clown. <laughs> so he did it. <laughs> and you have the whole team conspiring behind my back. We have <laughs> Snacks. We have Scott. Congrats, Scott. Blast tweet it. We got Sexy Pats. We got Fade the Public. We got Animal. We got FB God. <laughs> We got BDGE. I'm I'm changing the login for the. <laughs> you can thank your friend Steven. Um, Favaraja. He wishes you well. And uh, nah, fuck Steve. Steve, don't bother coming to Hawaii Young. This week. <laughs> I mean, this is gonna be a solo show. Steve feeling himself right now. I think this is a really cool thing and a very nice thing that was done for you by your good friend. Yeah, Steve. I think you're. you're I not, think you're over yet. You're not. You're not counting in the love that was put into this. What love was put into this? Like, a lot I mean, of money. Look. How much money could Eddie Lacy cost? I don't Whoa. know. Look, look at him. He's like got to feed him. He's got to feed himself. Look gets at paid him. in fucking Chinese food. That's I need goat. three orders. Sweet and sour chicken or don't hey, fuck Look how happy Eddie harder. looks by just talking to you. Come on, man. You could see he was cl- he was smiling before yeah, he said it, too. He was like, this is such a joke. It's not real that it's funny. Yo, what's up, That's Nick? What... Uh, Eddie Lacy. Uh, <laughs> message from your friend Steven. Uh, we just want you to know that bro. you're a clown, bro. <laughs> you clown, bro? <laughs> A clown, bro. I was that, wondering how long we'd have to sit and wait until he actually I'm, I'm saw it. I'm just very curious if, like, you know, because that's like, you know, that's one of your idols. That's Shit Eddie. hurts. It's, it's got Don't burn hurt? an Eddie Lacy jersey I was right just now. Gonna say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish Steve could see this right now. The number 17 one. See this? I'm not going to burn it live on air, but it's getting thrown out. Oh! I could, we can make money off that. What, what, $17? Eddie Lacy, this what you mean to me. Up for grab. <laughs> We're done, Ed. I was your biggest supporter. I was your biggest fan. 
Sincerely yours, Stan. That seems a little excessive what you just did. Yo, what's up, Nick? Uh, Eddie Lacey. Uh, message from your friend Steven. Uh, we just want you to know that true clown, bro. I think it's content. It's great. Well, I never said it wasn't, you dumb fuck. I just said it was a little excessive. You threw out a Devontae Lacey jersey like that. All right, everyone. I kind of want to like see who's going to take it. Same. Some homeless guy's going to take it. Yeah, he's going to like wipe his ass with it. This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> Once they see the name on the back. <laughs> wow, what the fuck? This ain't Devontae Adams. It looks good, though. I'm not going to lie. He does. He looks great. He looks like half like he's been. Dude, he's sitting there saying your name. He's That's like cool. a Buddha. I don't pretty, know if you guys. It's pretty cool. Eddie Lacey talking to you. I'm going to send him one. And be like, like and have him repeat like, I'm coming on to your podcast Thursday night at 7 p.m. And he's going to be like, wait, <laughs> what? What? Oh, shit. You guys are fucking clowns. Doesn't he look exactly like like Snacks Harrison? Yeah, nah, he does he a little looks bit. like Eddie Lacy. looks just like him. He just looks like, uh, he looks like if you created a Madden player, made Eddie Lacy, and then there was like a there was like a race thing that you could put up, like the slider race, make him a little bit like Asian. He's got like a real like Buddha thing going on. He does. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clown, bro. You clown. Whatever, it wasn't even funny. <laughs> got wasn't a, even got funny. Rea- got Nobody thought it was funny. All right, uh, where where were we? Where were we? Let's get back to the actual show. I gave here. I gave one. Is I said Trey Lance to Carolina. Oh, no, he was doing. Uh, wait, oh, was you that were it? Gonna, you were going Trey, Trey Lance, Lance yeah. Carolina, which okay. I think is great. I I no, well, ver- we said realistic. It can't happen. Why is that not realistic? Because Deshaun Watson's going to Carolina. Well, he's not there yet. How dare you? How about Trey Lance to the Broncos? Ooh, I wouldn't want that. We not at all. Why? Because the guy is like, I want, I need to prove, we need a proven quarterback. We need a, we need a proven guy. That's what we need. And he's well, not it. He's a, he's a mystery. Right. There's a lot of question marks. He had the, you know, the. Well, the, that's why I think Carolina is a great landing spot for him. What did he play? A one game to display spot. like, hey, look here. Everybody's like my scouting game. Like come watch this. And he like destroyed the team. And that was it. Right. He's just a baller. Well, he's got the, he's got the dual threat that is obviously essential nowadays, and all the teams. I'm gonna be to honest; be I haven't really it. watched him at all. I've also like legitimately, I've said this before. I've read more about him than watched. So yeah, I, I don't I don't like do analysis on rookie quarterbacks. It's anymore. fine, but with Joe Brady, I would trust him. He comes in with good weapons. He's got DJ Moore, McCaffrey, Robbie Anderson. If they re-sign Curtis Samuel, I think that's a very good uh, lovable landing spot for Trey Lance. Yeah, I mean, I could see it. This is I fucking just, ridiculous. Just, How long did it take you guys to plan that? We've been had it in the works for like a month. A month? No, no, not that long. Yeah, it's been a so while. So Steve got Steve it. Steve sent it to us like a month ago. Like a month ago, and we were supposed to do it last week, but we didn't have. I didn't like get everyone involved yet, so we wanted to like blast tweet it with you know the whole the whole gang. I'm surprised Scott didn't do like a two minute long like edit <laughs> of it. <laughs> no, no, we wanted to keep it. You know, like, I'm surprised he. Did, I'm surprised he didn't take like you eight, a clown, eight clown. clips, <laughs> eight like, clips of me like saying things that were like really wrong, like predicting things, and after each one doing like that, you're a clown. Well, you, you know that 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 all comes it's now. Eventually. I know. Now it's I know, kind of know that I said that it's going to be funny. Eddie Lacy's going to be calling you a clown Ed forever, feeding ideas. Yeah, it's on the internet forever. That's the only problem that sucks, I guess. Sorry. You know, my mentions are just going to be clown from now on. I hate this. <laughs> I guess it's a deviation from no, because I just get no's every time just I get something. Just get clown emojis now. You know what, Scott? You're all fired. Don't don't put in anyone the, who participated is gone. Don't put in the part don't where he mentions up. that clown emojis bother him because then people will take advantage of that. So cut that out. We'll cut that part. See that? You're gonna cut the part where clown emojis bother him? Just don't just cut the part where he says that so then people don't start commenting clown emojis. See, you you're no fun, man. Look, man, it's damage control. You're the no fun police. Damage control. That's you all. You create it is. the damage and then you try to control it. That's it. That's what a real innovator Manipulation does. Manipulation one on one. True innovator. Fired. All right, so you like Trey Lance? I, I don't know if I like him. I like that landing spot if he's going to get picked in the top ten, which I think he's going to. I think Carolina makes the most sense. All right, hear good me coaching out. Coaching staff, good weapons. Hear me out. Hear me out. Built for success. One of my favorite players in the draft. I, I'm sh- I'm sure you could have guessed this, but Jalen Darden. I like him going to Detroit. I have a question. Isn't Jalen Darden like a small school six round rookie wide receiver? Yes. Why would we have been able to guess that? That snacks. St- there's no way he knows. That's who that my is. style. I've, I've I heard, barely I've know heard of him. Who it's it just is, yeah. really. It's just funny that you're, you're bringing him up before like a Devonta Smith, a Jamar Chase. Because who cares Let's about like a Devonta Smith? Like, fuck who Devonta does Smith. care about him? Who does? Fuck care? How can Devonta you care Smith. about Devonta Smith when Jalen Darden's on the board? That's so true. I know. Look, this guy's one of the best slot receivers and just vertically all all over why the field. The, why don't the Chargers just take him then? <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Why? Because. I like him better. I don't want the Chargers to have him. The <laughs> idiot. So I like him going to Detroit. Here's why. It's simple. Jared Goff. Fucking you're a clown, bro. Jared Goff targets his slot receiver a lot. You remember Cooper Cup? 
over 120 targets the past two seasons. You give a guy like Jalen Darden that amount of targets, he's going to make something happen. I don't know if you have watched tape on him or not. I said you said I you really haven't. I haven't. He's literally like he's like a Tyreek Hill type guy where like he's in space. You're not catching I've, him. I've heard good things. I've he makes things. one move and he's gone. So like Jared Goff needs that. Jared Goff isn't like throwing guys open. He needs a guy that's open and going to make something happen with it. So that's why I like the landing spot for Detroit. Plus the targets are there. They need they need wide receivers bad. I wouldn't oh, be surprised sure. if they doubled or tripled down. I honestly think Jared Goff is going to have a lot of trouble in Detroit just the fact that the cold weather situation, like people forgot. Like yeah, they might actually win four games. Yeah. so like, I think that's – As did, much help. Do they have the, does Vegas have them? I, like, what do they have them at? Do they have uh, the, the wins open? They've got to be like four and a half, five not. and a half maybe. And this is like a nice day two guy that they can actually the get their hands free on. agency, so they may not. Sixth round? Dare, how dare you with disrespect on Jalen? Goff's only going to be in Detroit for a year, so. He's a day two guy. He's not a day two. He's a day two guy. You're an idiot. He's out of North Texas. 5'9", 174. 100. First of all, 5'9", 174. What is fucking Devonta Smith? Like 6'1", 174? Yeah. Like, I'd rather have give the... Give me the tall. No, give me the compact guy that's going to be able to take a hit. Fandle little, doesn't have little, wins and losses. Give me the little yet. bruiser. Don't give me the, the skinny twig guy that's going to break down. Devonta Smith. You want to know I don't have a landing spot for him? Because he shouldn't have one. No, he should. He's a great player. I just don't... I, I'm not on him. Everyone thinks he's going to be the best in the... In the no, class, I, th- it's not I even think close. that's. I think actually, Devontae Smith. I feel like that hype's been taken down. Yeah, a little I was bit. gonna say it's almost chalky not to like him yeah. anymore. Yeah, is it? Fuck. I want to see one of the big uh, tight ends land in Jacksonville. I, I, I think no Ooh, one spends Trevor. like free agent money on tight ends quite like the Jaguars do. <laughs> so I do think that they try to or address the it in free agency. Yeah, or the Bears, but you know they went Komet, so I don't think they will go after someone. No, uh, Brevin Jordan or Pat Fairmuth. I think make Fair- make Fairmuth is that how you is that the Penn it? State guy? Yeah, yeah. I was watching film on him today. I haven't I haven't watched uh, Jordan, but uh, the kid, yeah, the kid Pat, is that the kid from Miami? Who's Miami? Yeah, yeah. Brevin Jordan. That's, yeah, I'm not big on names. He's I like a big. He's a big yak guy. Firemouth is more like a uh, firemouth. I don't even know how to say. say it. Fucking, mm. he's more like a Hawkinson. Yeah, like can do everything well. Built really big. Can catch the ball. Like do all that. Catch kind of shit. block. Yeah, nothing amazing. Yeah, something like that, which means he's probably gonna fucking stink. Yeah. So Jacksonville's gonna use a second round pick on him or something. I think uh, he's going to end up sneaking possibly into the back of the first round, but or at least he's got that talent. I don't know if he actually will, but I want. I, I think Jacksonville addresses that position for sure. I think, yeah, that would be nice. I think it's finally time the Packers get a receiver. A receiver, right now. Which what do they pick? Twenty ninth, I want to say twenty eighth. I um, mean, you could look it up. Realistically, the obviously the top three are off the board. So then, who do you got? Uh, Bateman, Marshall Jr. Right, he should be there at the end. No. Terrace Marshall, yeah, that that would make that would sense. Be, that too. would be a nice fit with Devontae. I would love R- Rondell Moore. I fucking love mm. Rondell Moore. I think uh, Deami Brown out of Carolina makes makes sense in like the second round for uh, for the for the Packers as well. well a so field stretcher. Honestly, at this point, he's like just a Will Fuller type. Any one of those receivers to the Packers, just one of the, well, like, that's the what I'm one saying, of the top right. eight receivers. Be there. Pencil in the put him to the Packers. I can't wait to watch their draft this year because they're gonna do something stupid. Well, as if hell. a quarterback falls, you never know. That'd be incredible. I would like to see them actually draft like a defensive guy in the first round. Everyone goes nuts. Well, I think it's the, the right move because there's still yeah. going to be wide receivers Football in the second wise. round. They're draft be... some kind of some D tackle or some shit. When you have Devonta Adams, you're not looking for another number one. You need a solid two. You need another guy that can stretch the field maybe. I, I don't know if I would waste a first round pick on a wide receiver if I was the Packers. Mm. I, I, I would get well, like a, this a, is just well, a free agencies before the draft. So they may sign like a Will Fuller. Haven't they been linked to him forever? Yeah, but that's not a guy. Like, I'm not going to rely on Will Fuller going I, into the season. I especially understand with that, but history. if you if you sign a receiver, a Will Fuller, a Curtis Samuel, then you probably don't take a receiver in the first round. Is my point. Like you said, they go defense because it's better for their team overall and how it's constructed. Yes. All right. So oh, off of the Packers, I want to go back to the Atlanta Falcons because I had a running back that I wanted to see go there. His name is Travis. No, is that so Travis Etienne? Yeah. yeah. Travis Etienne. And here's why. I'm not sure if I'm right on this or not, but I have a feeling you don't really like him. And I feel like if he did go there, it wouldn't really be a fit that you would like. It would kind of almost mold into all the classic running backs of the – well, not the classic, the recent running backs of the Falcons where they think they have a good guy, they think he's a perfect fit, and they're just not going to use him. They're going to try and pass him the ball. He's not going to be able to catch it. And Matt Ryan's going to throw 48 times a game. And it's going to be a big flop. I like Travis Etienne a lot as a player. Uh, I wouldn't like him in Atlanta. In Atlanta. I'm actually looking for, like, I'd rather a more well-rounded player, a bigger size player, so they can kind of implement what they had going on in Tennessee. Like, I'd like a guy who can probably carry the ball 20 times a game. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I don't want to spend high draft capital. And, you know, if we don't get Najee, there's no one in the class that I think would like fit the bill that I would like at a value. So I like this kid, Elijah Mitchell, a lot out of Louisiana. He's built like a workhorse. And Ramondre Stevenson out of, uh, I think he's from Oklahoma. Two huge fucking backs that I think, depending on what they run in the 40, I'm going to like them a lot or they're going to drop very far down my board. But if either of those guys impress athletically, those are two guys I'd want Atlanta to run the fucking show with in the backfield. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You need a guy that's just going to be... is like 235. That's what you want, because Matt Ryan's going to throw the ball 40 times anyway, but if you can have a guy that's going to run and wear down the defense a little bit, because you don't... Devonta Freeman wasn't wearing down the defense. Todd Gurley wasn't wearing well, down that's the what I, Well, that's what I'm nervous. Like, Travis Etienne's going to be another Devonta Freeman. Exactly. He's like too explosive. And he's too... I, I, liked, I, I think I do like that if they pair him with Fields, but that's a lot of... <clears throat> Here's the thing: Probably if we go with Travis Etienne, like capital. the entire offense is just going to be very different. You know, like you're almost making if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna center the offense around him, it becomes a whole different like scheme and game plan. I feel like you know. Well, that's why I'm saying I like it as in the fact that I think it would it would be bad for the Falcons. I don't think right. it would be like it's the the running back recycle. Like they just keep doing it every year. Like they had Devonta Freeman, then they had Todd Gurley. Now they're going to bring in Travis Etienne. It's been the same thing. It's not what they need, but it fits the Falcons. I guess. <laughs> Yeah, do you have another one? No, it was it was, it was Mitchell or or Ramondre Stevenson have any more? to the Falcons, but they're like f- fourth to sixth round picks. Um, all right, I mean that's pretty much it, I guess, for like the the actual. I'd l- I'd like we to, can we can keep doing some of these because obviously we didn't cover I'd also a like lot to of come the guys. Back to this, come back to this after free agency too, because uh, well, free agency changes things because you get positions get filled yeah. and stuff. This is just the first little. Uh, Introduction to some of like the, I would really like Washington to get a quarter. I can't believe I'm saying this to get a quarterback and then like draft a wide receiver at 19 to pair with Terry. I think they do. I I would really fuck like that, that up though. Yeah, they're gonna they're sure. gonna take like Kadarius Tony at 19 or some fucking. You know what's funny? Shit. I just looked at a mock draft before and that's who they had. Yeah, uh, mocked to, to them at 19. That'd be terrible. I want Rashad Bateman to go somewhere where he could take over as a one. I want him. I want like Chicago to let. Robinson walk and then Rashad Bateman goes in and takes over that. So right like, I, I agree with something like that would be awesome. But the problem is, who's throwing the guy? Yeah. the ball. That's more like long term. Like, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. it's going to be someone new next year. Like, They'll there's have, get a quarterback. This kind of brings me to the the next thing I wanted to discuss. Not like not for a while here, but just I the fact I, that. Oh shit! I think I like Bateman. Oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Bateman, where there I are like Cleveland, they there are, the ball so much. It's like um, there are too many quarterbacks in the NFL right now. Odell's gone. We sorry. I don't think I can't think of a time when we've had this problem where. You have so many fringe guys that are like on that that line of backup or starter or like out of the league in a year. Like there's all like these these guys that have that two year window right now. I'm just gonna name a couple. Go down this list: Big Ben, Drew Locke, Sam Darnold, Jimmy G, Jameis Winston, Mitch Trubisky, Tua, Mariota, Carr, Jalen Hurts. And then let me, let me ask you though: Do you actually think there are more fringe quarterbacks in the NFL right now, or each year that passes by, it seems like the NFL fan gets more and more susceptible to needing a quarterback to be elite before they accept them. You know what I mean? Like at this point, if your rookie is not coming out like fucking, you know, a Deshaun Watson type rookie year or something like that, where it's so promising and so much upside that you're just like, oh, he's probably well, going to be out of league. That all years. started with Andrew Luck and RG3. Right. We've when been spoiled to the point where like if you're not doing yeah. it right away, it's the same thing with NFL. Co- we're seeing it with like everything. Well, and, Coaches, and NFL quarterbacks. Teams are, NFL teams are essentially like that too. I think... Yeah. They're trying to upgrade everywhere. Look at the, the Cowboys and the, the Seahawks may trade with Russell and Dak. Like, Russell's an improvement well, here's for Dak. The, the, the best one to look at, I think, is just the fact that you have Sam Darnold and the Jets, who's, what, 23 years old? He's a yeah. two, three year, was his third year, but not really. This will be his fourth. Because of everything with, yeah, but you've got injuries and mono. He really hasn't even had a full year, basically. And this guy might be losing his job to another rookie that they're going to draft possibly. Like what is the difference between a Zach Wilson and Sam Darnold right now? I think there's, I, I understand what you're saying, especially talent and stuff. I probably would say Wilson overall has more talent. His arm is pretty, you like Wilson pretty, a lot. I do. I like Wilson. Um, I don't love the whole BYU stuff and how mm-hmm. he wasn't, you know, he dominated that conference and I, I get it. But from the Jets perspective, we were kind of talking about it last night, uh, last night, last week. Sam Donald's going into his fourth year. You're going to have to pay him in a year. Zach Wilson, you'll have it for five years. And Sam Donald has no ties to Joe Douglas or Robert Sala. So from their perspective, I completely get it. But I know what you're saying, too. Get him another offensive lineman. Build the Twin Towers. Take Sewell. Have Beckton. And then let him go. I firmly Use believe... their 23rd pick on a receiver. Get him more help. 
I just firmly I believe that it. most quarterbacks in the NFL with a solid line can produce. Mm-hmm. They can make yeah, the same throws. Sure. They can. It's you know, decision making obviously comes with time. In Every the offensive line fucking stinks. That's yes. that's, that's like the thing, ultimate yeah. problem. It's a huge problem. Philip like, Philip Rivers looked washed in Los Angeles. Now he didn't look great this past year, but he definitely looked twenty times better yeah. than he did his last year in Los Angeles because mm-hmm. he had the best offensive line in front of him. So. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, Jameis Winston didn't play at all last year, but, like, is he done being a starting quarterback in the NFL? No. I can't picture that. No. You no can't way. tell me no that like, Jameis no will way. never. But, like, where's he starting? And that's a good situation for him, too, is sure. in New Orleans. Where's he playing? That's this a... is why I'm trying to, like, figure out, like, all so, these guys, where are they going? So, like, my gut tells me that he'll be the starter for New Orleans next year. When you look at, like, the numbers and stuff, it's going to be really hard to make that work. Yeah, they're way. Because they're so under way. the cap. And after well, sitting for a year for a million dollars, you know, Winston wants to get paid now. Obviously, not going to sit for two years. But he's, yeah, he's, I don't know. Like, my. If I had to guess right now, I would say he's probably the starter for the Saints. But I also think it's it's going to be like a legitimate quarterback by committee there between him and Taysom Hill. <laughs> Which like, I didn't even put Taysom committee. Hill on this list, but like that's just another guy that like you know the infatuation of Sean Payton with Taysom Hill is still mind numbing to me. Like what's going to happen next year after this season? Like Nick is Nick Foles going to be a starting quarterback this no, year? Nick I Foles hope not Nick because Foles. he shouldn't be because you have you know, five rookies that should be eligible starters or have a chance to start, and then you have guys that. From last year, like if Derek Carr gets traded, you know, he's an instant starter. He's an instant starter, but who they trade for? Like, there's so many guys that should be starting quarterbacks. That I'm just, I don't, I want to like Jimmy G. I don't think there's only be 32 a starting teams, quarterback. 32 jobs, but I think he will be a starting quarterback. Mm, it's San Fran, probably like New England. I, I, who else? Like is, is Jimmy gonna... G. An actual starting quality quarterback in this yes, league? Yes, he is because there's not other people that are. There's not 32 better quarterbacks than him. Like not everybody's a top ten quarterback. That's the thing. Well, none of these guys are top ten. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's After like, like the top ten, there's just like everyone's just like San Fran needs to get rid of Jimmy G. And it's like, and and then what? It's just a mix of all like the same guys. Well, it, it, that was back in the day too. There was that draft with I think Gabbert, Ponder. Yeah, that was uh, Walker and yeah, stuff well, like those that. Guys were all busts. I understand that, but those guys aren't like great either. You yeah, could argue. Those, you could argue a lot of those are backups too, like like Ponder and Gabbert. Were. But they were backups like immediately. Like they played like they had. And they they had their chance. Roles. They had their chance. They sucked, and then they backed up for years. I cannot. None of those guys were like Marcus Mariota. Wow. Marcus Mariota was a starter, became a backup. Is he going to be a starter again? You think? A, a mm, team's no, desperate. Uh, no one's going to sign him to be a starter. Not starter money. He'll get signed, but, and then like the starter will get hurt, and he'll get. Like six career games backup now. He's probably a career backup, yeah. Like, that's crazy to me. He almost. had five years to prove that he wasn't, and but he didn't. He, like, did, but he did. It's no, he weird. didn't, though. He was terrible. Yeah. He was not good. He had, like, an efficient rookie year, and then after that, he was terrible. Yeah, but who was around? Like, who I he, get it, but, like, you know, I'm like just They saying. weren't even using Derrick Henry when he was there. <laughs> like, they didn't even give Derrick Henry the ball. Yeah, I mean, he didn't have a lot to work with, but, like, still. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of these guys that, you know, give him a second chance. We could see what happens. I just, I'm very... Interesting. It's like a Ryan Tannehill type thing. Give him that second chance. Give him another yeah, exactly. landing spot. Many, I, I get it. Yeah. I get exactly. It. Tannehill was a guy a lot of people were probably saying he's a career backup now. Yeah. After Tannehill, two Tannehill yeah. I mean, well, Tannehill had a big first year there uh, as the quarterback, and then he tore his fucking ACL. So it was like. And then Adam Gase. Yeah. And, so, I mean, listen, there's a lot of fucking, there's a lot of excuses to be made for a lot of people, and most of the time it doesn't work out. But, like, yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I'm just very interested in the quarterback market overall in the NFL right now. Because I mean, I don't Chapters, think didn't Chapter say he put the over under, like, 18 and a half of co- teams having new uh, I thought starters, that was ridiculous. But which that's is crazy. Me too, and then, the like, the next the day game. there was, like, two trades. Right. I was like, there goes four. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Like, it's just. It's a very crazy quarterback market. I don't remember a time the, the, where you could it was probably this argue, saturated. Absolutely, and you could probably argue there's what three quarterbacks, four quarterbacks that are absolutely safe on their mm-hmm. respective team. Like, yeah, yeah. Like and then there's it. a guy, a bunch of guys that Rogers, I, Mahomes. I don't mean to interrupt you. Rogers, Mahomes, Brady. Dude, I don't even know how safe Rogers is this no, year. Stop. This, this year, year he's yeah. safe. Yeah. This year, Rogers, Mahomes, and then yeah, Brady. Yes, yesterday comes out where um, the Cardinals signed J.J. Watt and somebody. Well, Somebody dude, tweets out, go trade Kyler for Deshaun. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just a, I, I know. a tweet. But, like, Russ I, Wilson could be on the move. Like, I would have never. That's what I'm saying, though. Yeah. Like, who would have thought Russ no Wilson. No one's safe. The NFL has turned into, the, into a fucking Madden it's, franchise. It's like it's the NBA. Well, it's the NBA now. Yeah, yeah it's crazy. But, like, I'm just like, I, I could talk about this forever. No, it's, Sam it's, Darnold. It's wild. Is Sam Darnold going to be a career backup after this year? No. No. See, that's a guy I would. Like, he's going to be 24 years old. On that list, old. that's a guy I'm. I'm I'm taking my my chance. Out. I didn't even say Daniel Jones because I don't want to hear you talk about him. But Daniel <laughs> Jones is on this list. No, I know he is. He's got one more year. If he sucks, I want him out. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'll, I'll say all great things and I will love him because he's literally a lovable loser and he looks like such a fucking idiot. And he got such all this backlash from everybody on draft night, not me. 
Not me. Not him. I was very happy about the pick. But he's got one more year. We had like, if only we recorded things yeah, if on only videos. We had him screaming. No, nah, there's no videos. No such video exists. But I think this three-year barrier. Where's his draft this year? Cleveland. Cleveland. I'd go to Cleveland. Are it's they not, allowing a lot far. of people? I don't know. We'd I have don't to look know. into that. Yeah. We, we still have like a month and a half too, so it's like I doubt it. Yeah. It's probably not worth it. Yeah. Uh, all said and done, where's probably, the draft not worth next it. year? I, Do I don't know. That's actually something good to look up. But the three-year quarterback window. In my opinion, like I'll give him this third year, and then that's it. Spike to Vegas. Is it, oh, is it? Vegas? Okay, there baby. you go. Vegas. Fuck Cleveland. We're not going to Cleveland. Yeah, we'll go to Vegas. Right. We we'll go to Vegas. All right, sweet. Yeah. So, um, but it is an interesting it's point. An interesting there quarterback are so quarterback market. Just yeah. something to keep an eye on. I think free agency is going to be wild, and I think there's and it's some, a pretty good time to to need a quarterback. There's going to be some crazy trades. Like I, I, I'm going to go back to it here because I, I could I keep talking. But like. If we if the Broncos do trade for Deshaun Watson, say we do trade Drew Locke to the Texans, or we don't, we say he's not in the trade. Is Drew Locke our backup, or is some team going to try and make him? A no, they would probably they would probably try and like tr- trade like a third or. Wait, if you form. get Watson, you're saying? I'm saying say we traded for Deshaun Watson, but we didn't put Drew Locke in the deal. Like some he's team, now some, our some team would trade for. Him. Some we, team would definitely trade for. Him. Yeah, for yeah. like a, you know, a and third no round pick keeping, or something. There's no point of keeping Drew Locke as the backup when you get signed like a guy for two million dollars, get an asset for him. That's what I'm saying. There's so many of these guys that like could become starting the teams could be interested in plus the five or six guys that could go in the first round of the draft so like, this quarterback market is insane and i'm very Dude, I'm there could be an top five there could be five quarterbacks in top 10 yeah that's what i'm saying i'm keeping an eye on this because i think we're gonna have a lot of a lot of changes going on at the quarterback position you're gonna see some crazy names you know on the back of jerseys in there i'm that you very, wouldn't have expected it's gonna start happening soon i would think too because you would want to you would figure you'd want a deal done before draft like well, Deshaun Watson, you would hope so, but that organization is just doing everything wrong right now. So who knows? Yeah, they're this is the only way they could rebuild that team, and they're just like not accepting calls on them. All right, let's uh let's round out the show with uh, go seven and nine forever, Houston. Some possible we're gonna do a herd of goats next week. We just want to narrow down what topic we will do for that herd of goats. Any ideas floating around? I know we did mention that was a good one. Cancelables, yeah, cancelables. I might so, I might put myself up. Would there. we do it as like um <laughs> like what's like the limit? There's like actors to Athletes like just anybody. It seems like anyone that's well known. Like Dr. Seuss is not. He's just celebrities, I would say. Yeah. So you could do like um. I don't want to spoil my like any good ones, but like. All right, I, I know where you're going with that. That's a good one. Yeah, I think we, we get put creative that. with that. All right. Um, I had one here. It would be the herd of goats of. It's very broad. But things that make you go like wow. So like something that you know. So like every touchdown on Sundays. Yeah, it doesn't have Twitter. to be, you know, football related. It could be anything. Like, you know, you see um, a fucking duck fly away. Like, you know, it's wow. It's you say wow to that? Sometimes it's pretty, mm, pretty No, you're, you're losing fucking herd of goats next week. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Things that make you say wow. Well, like, wow, look at that duck. It's yeah, flying. like, okay. I could get the point. I think it has to be more uh, concrete. Well, I didn't get to think about my actual herd of goat topics here. I'm just, the topic, I, didn't have, I don't have the answers for you yet. Okay, well. You know, that was just something like, okay, well, like what, you know. You, what do they want to say? A shooting star. Wow. 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 Mm-hmm. Or like a. Uh, Drew Locke throwing a completed pass. Wow. That's funny. Wow. Um, and then I have another one here would be like a herd of goats. Things you say to get someone's attention. We had talked about doing this uh, in the past, but we never that's a did good one. it. That's not bad. Like, oh, what's up, guy? Like, uh, hey, cunt. You know, G O. <laughs> yeah, there you I'm go. not mad about that. You know, so I think maybe you guys could help us out in the comments and tell us which one of these you would most like want to. Uh, I would say right, from our suggestions here, the cancel one would be the funniest. Yeah, that is yeah, I kind of agree. That's a so good I one. think we'll lean with that, but but still, we'll see what we'll see if still if, help us out. If something piques our interest in the comments. Um, and then also let's make sure we plug the voicemail, voicemail for. Yeah, I have done that earlier. Yeah, probably, but I did forget about it. So. All right, so we got the voicemail set up for Fade the Public, so we're going to be taking incoming voicemails. Uh, let me get the number. Can we get. put this in the front? Maybe? Like in, Scott could, yeah, yeah. He's the editor. So we set up the voicemail. Here's what you're going to call. You're going to call the number 201-644-6202. 201-644-6202. Data restrictions may apply. You have to drop voicemail in there. We're going to, if they're good, we'll talk about them on the next episode. If not... Snacks will return your call. Yeah, topics are yeah, uh-huh. unlimited, by the way. You can bring up anything. Just anything throw it you in want. There. We'll see if it's good. Comments, questions, concerns, tips. Just a, a statement. If you want to yell, whatever. You can yell. Call me a bitch. 
had that before. Seems what everybody else does. Is that it? Exactly. That fucking bothers me too. Nothing bothers me. Nothing. Bye.